Hello. I taught computer animation uh, a long time ago at a university here in Germany, and one of the initial problems many students had, or several students had, was the communication between an animation channel, for example, something which moves from left to right and a little bit up and down, and what is called the graph editor and its curves. How are the curves in a graph editor related to a motion? So let's create a, a polygon plane, scale it up quite a bit, make the grid invisible, and give it uh, a new shader, a new material, and I give it a new Arnold, uh, no, actually a Lambert shader, because uh, when I change this now to blue, for example, or with a checkerboard, uh, uh, then all following objects would carry that checkerboard. That's why I created a new shader here. So uh, now I can see it. I want to make this uh, rigid body and in order to do this I go to FX and Fields and Solvers and create passive rigid body. Please uh, meditate on this command. I go to FX then to Fields and Solvers and then down to passive rigid body. It basically converts the plane into something which is being felt as a hard object when they come in contact with it. So now it's done. Nothing changes here in the outliner, but you have a positive result here created a rigid body named rigid body number one. Now we need something which falls down on that ground and for that purpose let's pick just a, s a simple uh, cube and I rotate a little, it a little bit and scale it up quite a bit and I think it's nice to have another color uh, Arnold standard surface shader and oh, quite a light blue now. Uh, now nothing happens because uh, I need to give that block dynamic f uh, features and this is very simple. Uh, I have it selected and go back to Fields and Solvers and I just give it gravity. This is a sort of legacy process because in the N world, in Maya, N particles, N cloth is N hair, N constraints, uh, you can do it in another way but uh, this is uh, this is the most straightforward uh, process really to do this pretty simple thing which we're doing now. Actually it was not simple at all 20 years ago. So we have a rigid body now which is active and a rigid body now which is passive and I have a cube falling down. Uh, now I want to change something uh, about the rigid bodiness of uh, actually of the surface here. Uh, I want to have it uh, more bouncy. It's currently set to 0 0.6 which is the default I guess. Let's make it a lot more bouncy. Very nice. Okay, now extend the frame range to say 400. And now we are approaching the graph editor. The graph editor sits here under Windows, Animation Editors, Graph Editor. When I select the plane here, I have no keyframe, nothing in here, no lines. When I select the cube, there's nothing here as, wo uh, as well. So um, what is it about, the graph editor? Well, it's about keyframes. And uh, I close this window now because we're now creating keyframes. Why don't we have keyframes right now? Because we're in a dynamic simulation and the dynamic simulation doesn't need keyframes. It's just something completely different. It works with forces. So we never told the cube to be there at this very specific moment. But of course uh, we can create keyframes and for that purpose we go to animation because it's an animation thing. Um, I mean this is uh, in, um, in brackets now. Um, you have the Alembic cache. That's typically the way you would do it these days. But the classic way is go to key and here you have bake animation and the default settings say the selected uh, object will be converted to keys and um, we have a time range of the time slider which is from 0 to 400 or from 1 to 
400. When I apply this now, Maya runs through the whole dynamic process very, very fast and on the fly creates lots of keyframes, 400 keyframes for each parameter of our cube. So lots and lots of keyframes within just a second. So let me apply this now. So it's done now. Lots of keyframes, which mean red and red down here. Actually, I can create, uh, delete the gravity now because we have keyframes. We have a baked simulation, which doesn't care. If we delete the ground, let me delete this just for, for a second. Uh, the cube will still bounce. Actually, kind of, I could leave it there. Um, I select the cube with all the keyframes down here and I go back to Windows Animation Editors and Graph Editor and you see lots of curves now uh, which is just fine because we now have keyframes. What I would advise you to do now is move the window of the Graph Editor slightly down until it gets semi-transparent like here and then just leave uh, let, let loose of the mouse, you can move it up now and you, now you have the perspective window up here and uh, at the end of this tutorial I'll show you how to get rid of that graph editor down here because uh, with the next start of Maya you'll probably have it here again and you maybe don't want it again. Um, so let's have a look from the side. Actually I see too many rigid body things here still which are not relevant anymore. Uh, let me delete them. Um, edit, delete, all by type, rigid bodies. Where are they? Right here. Now this green line shows the translation in Y, the position of our cube um, in terms of height, how high it is. And it has some uh, waves here and then a long curve down. The long curve down comes from this because it falls down. It's already down here. Uh, and it starts to fall right here. So you see that's where it goes down. Now let me select just this part here, just a random part in the middle of the animation like this, this part here. Let's get a little bit closer and press the key F. So I frame these things now and what you see now is you have the sharp corners here, these the sharp edges which show you where the cube bounces off the ground. It feels the ground and immediately changes direction. So here it's almost there. One frame later it's almost there. Not yet. And then it feels the ground and goes up in about the same speed as how it came. So this is basically the acceleration which you see here. It's very slow and then it accelerates again and goes down again. What is happening here? Well, it bounces off and why doesn't it shoot up like before? Well, because we have a rotation of the cube now here. That means another edge touches the ground very soon after this one. And then it goes up again. We can uh, use the usual navigation tools here in the graph editor. So I just zoomed out a little bit or dollied out a little bit and here you see all the bounces. It slowly starts at the start of our animation then it touches the ground and moves up straight. And you see that in general the height diminishes slowly. It, um, it's not possible physically to make them bigger all the time because uh, there's an energy loss due to damping of course and now it falls off. Let's have a look at the translation in X, that's uh, the forward translation, it's much more subtle and not as drastic but it also shows 
corners and edges right here let's press F where something happens with the when the uh, direction changes immediately if you think this motion is too harsh and animation should be soft and smooth I think you're mistaken here but you can try it out curves and simplify curve and just simplify it so it goes like this how does the animation look like now it's more of a dancing process and not really <laughs> the realistic animation which we expect from a cube to fall down when it falls down on a plane for example the first part here is quite nice because we don't have that harsh edge now it kind of slows down you see that slowing down process here instead of falling straight down it now slows down before it touches the ground which is totally unrealistic well and having said this I need to tell you uh, what I promised at the beginning how to get rid of the graph editor so you can have a clean next startup you just grab that top here and you just undock it and you can close it bye bye